What's up everybody, this is Yudit1999 here and today I want to share a breakdown video on how I made this artwork. It's A2 sculpture from Nier Automata based on initial design or concept art by Seantai or Raiko Art. It's a personal project that I wanted to have a lot of my creative freedom to put into the artwork. So I made a lot of my own tweak to the original design to fit my vision on how I wanted her to look. Definitely had a lot of fun working on it, so yeah, let's get wet into the breakdown. I started this project using base body that I created myself from my previous projects to save time. If you want to see me sculpting everything from scratch including the body, I would suggest you check out my iRed timelapse. I imported a hip lens model that was exported from ZBrush. It has the correct basic planes. And then I set up camera with the concept art by Raiko Art as background image to guide me along the way. If you are curious how to set it up, I have video on that as well in my channel. After I set it all up, I started posing the base body in edit mode trying to match the pose with the concept. This project was made asymmetrically from the start except the head because I wanted to get myself more flat hours with the asymmetrical sculpting. And then from there, I was just starting destroying it basically and re-sculpting a lot of it. But because the proportion is already established, I don't have to worry too much about it. Sketching out the design and blocking everything out. Here's for the head, as usual, I use dynamic topology and smoothing everything out. After everything is smooth, I started sketching out the face. In this project, I really didn't know where I was going. I was just experimenting because it's a side project and I was only working on it in my free time, mostly just in weekends to be exact. The total hours that I spent in this project is about roughly 100 hours and it was separated by a lot of sessions. In this early part of the process, it's really hard for a lot of people to get motivated and keep going because the model doesn't look like anything that they have in mind but trust me everybody, you need to keep pushing it. I look at a lot of references, finding out what's wrong. There is so many resources out there right now that there is almost no excuse for people that wanted to get good at sculpting. In this early part of the process, I also started painting out the vertex paint for the head so I can visualize better. In a lot of my older projects, I've never actually utilized the vertex paint feature and just went with that bland default flat color and once I started using it I realized how helpful it is I don't think I will ever go back after I blocked out the body and the head I started blocking out the hair using curve object with custom bevel and taper object the curve object has four individual bevel objects so I can draw four hair at once I really love the hair in the concept because it has that dynamic feeling. After all the hair laid down, I started fixing the transition from one hair to another in scope mode and in edit mode. And after that is fixing the silhouette. Adding vertex paint to block out the color for the body and hair is also can help for better visualization. Here's I was fixing the anatomy, making sure that it's all correct. The clavicle bone, sternocleidomastoid muscle, trapezius muscle, sternum bone, all that good stuff. Blocking out the outfit as well. I'm not worrying about any amount of detail at this point. Using clay strip brush and build that actual depth of the anatomy and then smoothing them out. Learning anatomy for me is very important especially if you want to be 
a character artist it is one of the basic knowledge that a character artist must know you don't have to know the naming but as long as you understand the volume the form the structure you'll be fine but i would argue that knowing the names is actually helpful because it helped me remembering where things are instead of saying like oh that part of the body that looks like fingers close to the armpit it's easier to say oh it's the serratus anterior muscle i see a lot of artists where they would do anatomy sculpting but the muscle definition is so sharp that it doesn't look natural it's not really wrong to do that because a lot of comic book characters like superman actually look cool with strong muscle and bones definition but for realistic or female model it's actually pretty smooth most of the time i used to think that anatomy is just about muscle but later i realized that bone and fat is really important too especially bones because it has a lot of landmarks for proportion and structural guide fat on the other hand can be really tricky because depending on how fat the character is it can make really different physique from one character to another and here's i started polishing the head a little bit more a lot of people ask me about resources for learning anatomy at the top of my head right now i can recommend you check out uh, proko's youtube channel he has a lot of really easy to understand anatomy videos and his videos is presented in a fun way that made it enjoyable uh, to learn anatomy and next is rafael corsetti body anatomy also his female anatomy tutorial is really good too as for books that i always looked at when i'm sculpting is anatomy for sculptors by uldi zarins and sandus Conrads. this book is amazing it has these simplified examples of anatomy but also has in-depth anatomy for us for artists as well i think every character artist must own this book um, the other one that is pretty good as well is frank Cho, drawing beautiful woman i think i think what it's called although the the, the, the proportion in that book is kind of not my type i guess i would say that uh, i have other recommendation as well like male anatomy for artists by cg makers and female anatomy course by speedcar so check them out if you want to learn more about anatomy i think learning anatomy is fun because when i was starting out i didn't know anything and then once i started learning anatomy everything started to make sense and that feeling is so satisfying to me that i seek more resources to understand more about it Here's I messed out part of the body and then I use mesh filter to inflate it inwards so I can see where things are. I added more hair here because I wanted to make it feel more full. And also I started moving some hairs so some of it are not clumped together giving them breakup so that that looks a little bit more natural i think this step is pretty important uh, to also break that procedural feeling and make it looks more crafted by hand i replaced the eyes with an actual sphere what i like to do is use cube to make sphere to subdivide it and use cast modifier set it to sphere and factor to one the advantages of this is the mesh will have even topology and it's going to be 
helpful for sculpting and for vertex painting. Here I made simple eyelashes with planes. I didn't do hair type like eyelashes because I want to present the model as a sculpture and it's match the style of the hair as well. Uh, a lot of like action figures use technique like painting the eyelashes onto the head and I'm gonna use that technique as well later in the process. Polishing the head more. Fixing the silhouette of the hair again. Here I started blocking out the design for the outfit. I didn't follow the design from the concept because I wanted to do more complex outfit and the one from the concept is a bit too simple in my opinion. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a personal project so I have the freedom to do so. If it's a work from a client, most of the time you have to follow exactly like the concept art. I've done that for every client that I work for, so when I do personal project, I just want to have some freedom and put my own touch to the artwork instead of like making a one to one recreation. And it's much more challenging too. Uh, exploring the design for the outfit well I would say that uh, it's not exactly an outfit it's more like a synthetic skin uh, but anyways um, uh, this part of the process is super repetitive it's basically just sculpting and sculpting and sculpting so I'll probably uh, let you guys watch some footage when I was working on the design and I will come back to you at minute 16.40 
come back here so I fix the hair silhouette again and then after that I started sculpting the individual hair yeah the individual hair you heard that right your ears are not closed individual hair I grew a lot of hair on my chest after finishing this hair my eight gate were open like Kai Sensei from Naruto the universe were crumbling the dimensions are merged it was wild man looking at it from a workflow perspective is probably a bad decision but I really wanted to get that sculpted by hand feel you know I wanted to make every single hair feels unique but god damn it it was a stupid idea when I was working on the hair I kept thinking like can I do this this will take a lot of time and the whole time I kept thinking like that that for some reason I didn't realize that the time has passed and I finished it and again as I mentioned before it's a personal project so I don't have any deadline and I can work on the hair as long as I want it for now it looks still a little bit muddy but wait until I put clay polish on the hair it will look so much sharper and it looks so much better in my opinion Here's for the design on the stomach, I maxed out where I wanted the design to be placed and then I will inflate it and use it as guide for the curved object later on. I used curved object with bevel to make the design. I really love this type of ornamental design on a character and for this one, I wanted to make my own version but still follow the general looks uh, from the original design. Now for the stitches, I laid down the vertices for where I wanted the stitches to be placed. Convert it to curve and then I will use it in the curve modifier in my stitches object that I created from my previous project. In this project, I didn't need a perfect topology. Uh, so I just went to ZBrush and use Siri Master there. I just need an even topology for high res sculpting and also for UV mapping. Uh, some people probably asking why I didn't use the remesh feature in Blender. Mm, I don't know why. Uh, maybe because I haven't learned more about it and I'm used to with ZBrush Siri Master. It's pretty easy to use and pretty fast too. From there, I started laying down the UVs for texturing later. For the high res sculpting and surface details, I use ZBrush because it can handle a lot of polygons and still relatively stable. I started laying down leather alphas from textures.com. I will put the link below so you can get it as well if you want. Um, I got a comment a few weeks ago and this person was just like really hating ZBrush from what I've seen. Uh, he wrote like this 
long comment on why ZBrush is stupid or whatever. And I was like, why? I don't understand this kind of mentality to go out of your way and went to other people's video and just to rant on how bad ZBrush is is beyond me, dude. Like, if you like ZBrush, whatever. If you like Blender, whatever too, as long as you get the job done, who cares what software you are using. Each software has their own advantages and in my case, I like to use variety of software to get the job done because as I said before, some parts of the software are better than others. You don't have to attack other people dude. Alright, so for the skin pores I used uh, texturing XYZ and CT Sphere Skin Alphas. I will also put the link down below if you are interested. For the hair, I applied clay polish and zebras and it made the hair sharper and looks better in my opinion. Now for texturing, I use Substance Painter which I ironically call Adobe Substance 3D Painter now I believe. The funny thing is, the software updated in the middle when I was working on the textures for this project. So you'll see the UI changes a bit later on. I think it's pretty bizarre man, this update. Uh, for some reason, I didn't feel like I'm working in Substance Painter anymore. But fortunately, it didn't break my parameters, so uh, I was really worried that some parameters in my texture will change. From what I saw, this update didn't received well by the community. My concern is, uh, it's an Adobe product basically now, right? What if one day, they decided to change how the software works to behave like other Adobe products. I think that would make a lot of people pissed off. I mean, this update alone is already received pretty badly for most people. Uh, I don't know, anyway. I really love Substance Painter even now, I think it's one of the most powerful software out there. I think the key things for texturing in Painter is, if you're using the materials or smart materials, never leave it using the default values, always tweak them, combine them with another smart materials, you know. I remember when I was like just using Blender for literally everything, it was like, uh, I mean, I mean you can do it in Blender, but it's very finicky and like it has a weird way to get around stuff, at least back then. My texturing process is basically consists of base color and then gradient and then textures like either it's uh, leather, fabric, plastic, etc. And then add uh, surface damage, scratches and then dirt on top of all of that. After that, here I added more hairs, they're smaller and they act as flyaways and it made the flow of the hair much better in my opinion. I went back in press again to do the poly paint for the hair here. And it's time for lighting, materials, and rendering. I really love this process because this is where I can see my artwork coming together. The materials here is pretty simple 
uh, everything is using principles PSDF uh, plugged in all the textures from painter and then added some tweaking here and there to fit what I wanted to see the lighting is pretty simple it's just a three-point lighting I like using three-point lighting because it showcases the model really good in my opinion I made three other different renders with different scenarios uh, two of them is cinematic renders and and one with clay render to show the model without textures you can check them out in my art station if you are interested uh, to see more of it final step is compositing basically just finalizing the image uh, adding background fixing stuff and making sure that there is no artifacts or error so yeah that's kind of a breakdown on how i made this art to artwork uh, if you made it to the end of this video i really appreciate it uh, let me know what you think in the comments uh, if you have any questions don't be hesitate to ask me and um, yeah, uh, take it easy guys.